And good evening, I'm Cynthia McFadden. Tonight, living outside the law. It may surprise you to learn there are a growing number of Americans living right here in the United States who insist that federal laws do not apply to them, including the 22-year-old who showed ABC's Dan Harris the radical lengths he's willing to go to to fend off Uncle Sam. I'm going to go in and speak with the prosecutor. It's 8.20 on a Monday morning at the county courthouse in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. You can't come in with the camera. And the 21-year-old operating this video camera is trying to bring it into the courtroom where he's contesting a minor ticket. I don't know what the hell law book you're reading, man, but it doesn't apply to me. Watch what happens next. I'm going in. No, you're not going in. Don't touch me. You're not going in, sir. Let the record show that you just battered me. Step back. And you're using Oh! Ah! Ah, stop, please. Not I'm not right. doing anything wrong. His name is Robert Peterson, and he says getting tased is a small price to pay for his belief that the American government has no authority over him. What do you use it for? Just target shooting right now. I haven't had to shoot anything yet. So you would never take a reaction that was like shooting cops or... Yeah, they shooting me first then shooting back would be a, uh, a good reaction. Robert is one of the latest and youngest people to latch on to many of the beliefs of a growing underground movement known as sovereign citizens. People who do not believe that many of the basic laws of this country apply to them. I'm not an American citizen. I do not recognize these. I advise you to not to say I am my counsel. They have disrupted courtrooms, led police on high-speed chases, and even engaged in murderous shootouts with authorities. Oh my God! There are an estimated 300,000 sovereign citizens in America. The FBI classifies them as a domestic terrorist movement. Many of these people followed a scary progression from passionate but peaceful to ultra-violent. So when we saw this video on YouTube, we wondered, were we witnessing the real-time radicalization of a 21-year-old on his way to violence? You guys are really overstepping your bounds right now. When we tracked him down, we found a young man who, on the surface at least, appears average. He lives in his mom's house with his two younger brothers. He rides his bike. But he also straps on a pistol every time he leaves the house, which is perfectly legal here in Idaho, and openly declares the local police to be his enemy. Unfortunately, yes, they're the enemy. They're the enemy of anybody who wants to live free. Produce the information that I require, or you will be placed under arrest for obstructing. Robert's long series of run-ins with the cops began when he was 18 and got busted for making fireworks. That's when he went online and stumbled into a whole strange subterranean world of sovereign citizen ideology, which argues that the American government is actually a corporation profiting off of us and that it is not necessary in many cases to pay taxes or get a driver's license. Can't you see where people who've never been associated with this material before might look at this and say, this is just it's kind of weird. Not really. Robert's mother worries her son's beliefs will get him killed. How do you see this thing ending? Hard to say. Uh, my fear is that it's going to end with him getting shot. That's my ultimate, what I believe is going to happen. Do you agree with your mother that your philosophy might end up getting you killed? It could, yeah. But I'm willing to live with that or die with that. It is certainly true that putting his beliefs into practice has produced non-stop conflict. You have a gun, like I said, because I'm talking to you. It makes me a little nervous. This is Robert arguing with officers, giving him a ticket for riding his bike at night without a light. Am I being charged with a crime yet? Here he is trying to take his gun into a courthouse. Hey, will you authorize me to come in here? With? With my gun? No. So for a 22-year-old, it's pretty extensive rap sheet. Uh, he's, uh, he's certainly spent uh, more time than most here at 22 years of age, that's for sure. Do you worry that this is heading perhaps inexorably in a bad direction? Well, we, we, we hope not, but uh, we need to be aware who he is and his ideology just in case that manifests itself into a, a problem down the road. Now there is something in the chamber. After months of bucking the system, the day Robert had been waiting for arrived. He was going back to the very same court where he was tased to face charges stemming from that incident. Pre-trial conference, I don't really know what's going to happen other than they're going to probably offer me another deal, and I'll probably refuse it. 
He was facing two years in jail for battery and contempt of court. Take your stuff through the machine, take your hat off. You don't have a warrant for this, do you? No, I don't. Can you step forward? Arms out, please. There was extra security on hand, including the bailiff who so tased hand, Robert. You're using... oh! You don't ever want to do that to anybody, but our job is to pre protect the people not and, and not cause so, the I wasn't like that defendant before. harm or I anything. You, know, you always hate doing so. things like that. Inside the courtroom, Robert's defiance continued. If I could have you remove your hat, that'd be great. No, thanks. Out of respect for the court, they want him to take his hat off, but I get it. He doesn't have respect for the court. He finally took off his hat, and the judge set a trial date three days later. But the next day, Robert was called back in front of the judge to discuss a possible deal. Look what happened when he refused to rise. It's against my beliefs. I will find you in contempt if you don't rise, sir. All right, I will rise uh, under protest then. Fine. In the end, Robert took the deal the prosecutors were offering. No jail, but he knows his struggle is not over. Do you expect this to be your last run-in with the law? Probably not, no. Now Robert says he plans to sue the government for $15 million. So it's just the invoice? The next step in what he believes is a mission, one that he hopes will open the floodgates and inspire others to follow his lead. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Mm, our thanks to Dan Harris. And just ahead...